What's going on and happy St. Patrick's Day everybody. I'm Jem Mint and I didn't think I was going to be back with an omnibus haul so quick but this is a haul that I'm really excited for because there are two books in here that I am definitely going to read and review right away which is not always the case with these hauls. Uh, as always I do have to thank Marvel Comics. Thank you so much for sending a couple advanced copies of some hardcovers and to Organic Price Books who sent everything else. You got to check OrganicPriceBooks.com if you're looking for any omnibus. They have great prices, amazing packaging, and excellent customer service. You can save two bucks every time you use the code GEMMINT at checkout and you can also catch them on Whatnot just like me selling omnibus the bus with one dollar uh one minute or less start time auction so check them out at their site and on whatnot uh and let's go ahead and jump into the books all right guys first up we have from marvel comics cable by phil noto and jerry dugan this one comes out on april 13th and it collects issues one through four then issues seven through twelve kind of like the wolverine ohc where it doesn't have the tie-in issues that take away from this main story I thought this was an underrated story. I really liked it. It was one of the few Reign of X titles that I stuck with uh, and continually had good things to say about during every new comic book day review. Let's jump into it and we'll take a look at the art and uh, the contents. All right, so here's the dust jacket and I really like the colors, the orange and Phil Noto's art. It's very simplistic, but it's unique. I really dug it throughout this whole series. Here's the back here, you know, very in line with the other Reign of X uh, type of books, $40 cover price. And here's a little synopsis of the story. Here's the inside of the dust jacket, so nothing too crazy. Then we have the graphics on the hardcover, just that orange wraparound wallpaper look. Got the gray interior. We have some credits. And here we go. So this followed the exploits of Teenage Cable and it was during a lot of uh, post uh, Hox Pox events. So it was in Ten of Swords. He was in, uh, here we even have him, you know, of the Gathering of the Swords. So um, it, it was kind of interrupted by that, which is why I like that this uh, didn't seem to include the tie in issues and just skipped them all together. But uh, like I said, Phil Noto's uh, very unique uh, and recognizable art style. The, um, the story was okay. I mean, it wasn't the best ever, but it kept me interested. Really like how it ended and kind of left the cable, uh, old man cable and teenage cable open ended where they can continue to use the characters. I can see some people maybe not liking the style, thinking it's too simplistic, which it can be on the interiors, but damn, the cover art here looks great. So they give you variants in the back. Scotty Young's cable is actually pretty sick. But yeah, you get the idea. Recently got the reprint for Volume 1, and then we're back. Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman, Volume 2. This comes out on April 13th, and yeah, must have. I read and reviewed these two Omnis, uh, the first printings when they came out. Collects FF 6 through 23, then Fantastic Four 600 through 611, plus 605.1. Let's take a look at the art inside, but this is definitely must-read material, and you guys are lucky that you're getting these reprints. Yeah, that's right, you guys are lucky. In my day, we had to travel miles to LCSs to find out-of-print Omnis or be forced to buy them for aftermarket prices on eBay, but nah, uh, good for you guys. It's, it's very cool to see uh, Marvel reprint these types of whales. I mean, this was a great story. It, it's been some years since I've read it, plus I don't want to spoil anything, uh, but we'll take a look at the inside. So, Synopsis of the story and the creators here. You have the dust jacket art on the hardcover as well, plus the uh, other. I don't. I, I can't remember which one is the DM variant, but here's the other cover option and the spine. All right, let's take a look at the interiors. Some white cover pages. So Hickman's been doing that since way before Hoxpox, guys. <laughs> All right, so Future Foundation, like I said, it starts off with the FF issues. If you guys recall, Spider-Man even briefly joined, uh, and he even had that same costume. Love the artwork here. It feels epic. It's such on a grand scale, almost to like Marvel event proportions. Here's Spider-Man, like I mentioned, with that FF suit. Oh, man, the Johnny uh, Storm stuff. Man, this was a sick run. Like I think... The Frank the Franklin Richards arc as well, man, were some of like the most exciting things that I could really remember reading ever since I've been into this omnibus game and going into back issues. 
the stuff with Galactus and Franklin, the Celestials, like I'm all about that, man. But this is definitely something you guys got to pick up volume one and two and read it for yourself. Some Dr. Doom had to show up. Let's go ahead to the extra contents in the back. So there's a cover gallery, Gabriel Del Otto. That's pretty cool. Not often that you see him do light colors like that. Art Adams, John Romita Jr., the Joe Casada spread, iconic artwork here. Make sure to get volume one while you still can. Hopefully that reprint. I think that reprint comes out today as the day that I'm filming this. Uh, got, you guys are seeing this on St. Patrick's Day. So make sure to grab volume one and then this one comes out. Like I said, what was it? April 13th. All right, guys, now on to stuff that has already been released, Berserk Volume 10. I've read the material, super excited to jump back in and blaze through this probably in one sitting and do a review. Let's unwrap it and uh, take a look at it together for the first time. All right, so Volume 10 is here, man. I know Volume 41 of the trade paperback, the, fo the final uh, Berserk trade paperback just came out. It's all stylized. I'm not collecting those trades anymore. I did have them to catch up and then I sold them, but I am collecting these deluxe editions still. They're $50 each and they're just, man, some of my favorite books in my collection. Um, the construction of them, the lightweight feel to them, the paper quality, the posters in the, the inside. So I'm definitely gonna take this as soon as I'm done doing this video. Uh, this is gonna go on my nightstand and we're gonna read and do a review for volume 10 just it's just tradition at this time you know just always reviewing each volume of uh berserk let's see what this collects so deluxe edition volume 10 collects volumes 28 29 and 30. this is where they started including little biographies on the cast and in, in the beginning so we're still in the Falcon of the Millennium Empire arc, the Falconia chapter. Here's all the chapters for this volume. We're just going to flip through it. Some Skull Knight guts action. The little boys getting bigger. Was a fetus looking like that. I'm trying to see if I could recall what part of the story we're in just by looking at it. Dang, look at the artwork here though. This uh, big, huge apostle. Berserker armor in full effect. Man, I cannot wait to revisit this. I'm glad that I, I did it the way that I did, where I kind of read all the individual volumes, and now I'm going back for a second reread. You pick up on things you may have missed and just get to revisit the art and the world, the universe that was created here. We have Griffith. Griffith ascending to godlike status. He will have his own empire, and we see that play out throughout this story. Dang, amazing artwork here. All right, so that's enough uh, of a preview here. I am definitely going to be reviewing this shortly within the next few days, guys. All right, then we got a DC omnibus. We have the Batman Superman omnibus. This is volume two by Ed McGuinness, uh, Mike Green, Mike Johnson. Ed McGuinness is not on here. Ed McGuinness was on volume one. Anyway, I had the absolute editions of these that I read both. I have not read volume one. I know the Omnis have a bunch of tie-in issues, uh, more so than those absolutes. So let's take a look at it together and see what we got. All right, yeah, so yeah, Ed McGinnis not on the book, but Superman, Batman, Omnibus, volume two. We have the dust jacket here, super thick book, which DC likes to keep their Omnis on the oversized scale it collects issues 44 through 87 plus annuals three and five this is a 125 dollars book inside of the dust jacket just has some artwork we have artwork on the hardcover as well so you have batman on the front same spine superman on the back day and night dark and light Got the cover page and here we go jumping right into it I have live wire action here. So yeah, I, I'm not really sure um, what the difference was between the absolutes. I mean, I know the absolutes probably only had 12 or so issues in each. So I read some of this story, but not all of it. And to, for the life of me, I can't really remember. I remember the dark side stuff, but I feel like that was all taken care of in volume one. Because I think Ed McGinnis was on that art. So just flip it through. I mean, so far the art looks great throughout this. 
But I don't hear many people talking about this run, though, to be honest. But they did, uh, they came through and printed out both volumes, huge volumes. Definitely need to revisit this one day and, uh, and do a review for it. But the coloring, the artwork looks super clean throughout, even when the artists change. And this is a change right here. The different Superman. This looks great. All right, so we'll have to check it out. Let's see what's going on in the back here. Story to the end. All killer, no filler. Yeah, it looks like it, right? Okay, so a little bit of a bonus material in the back. Some covers. Not too many, though. And some uh, some sketches and whatnot. You know, I couldn't find a release date on this. I'm not sure. It might already be out. But the Amazing Fantasy Treasury Edition. This is a five-issue miniseries. And it also has a uh, Prelude Infinity comic. Uh, that just recently came out. So for 35 bucks, you get this prestige format. It's like the best format for trade paperbacks, I would say. Uh, it might already be out, but uh, like I said, I couldn't find that release date. But let's take a look at it. All right, so first of all, I loved the cover art for this series. It's what drew me to the series. Uh, I'll, but, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't translate to the interiors, though. But great cover art. Here we have the back. And I was reading this in single issues. Um, I kind of dug the premise of it at first. It's kind of like Spider-Man. Who is it? Spider-Man, Black Widow, and Captain America are dead. They're dead, and they find themselves in this kind of like Savage Land um, experience. This is like some alternate universe take on these characters. It was it was really weird, but I didn't stick it all the way through. It kind of lost me around issue three or four, I think. And I did not get around to finishing it. But I mean, man, if it's only five issues, I might as well take the time to read this. But yeah, you have three kind of stories that were going on at the same time. And then they did kind of merge together here. And I never found out what actually was happening. I, I do want to give out just a small spoiler. So like Uncle Ben is there like on this weird afterlife plane. So they're like dead. Everyone knows they're dead. It's kind of weird. You got some variants in the back. Wow, that's great. It looks like Alex Ross, Felipe Massafera. Looks great. Huge oversized format, though. I'm a big fan of this. And wow, look at Phil Noto. Kind of a different uh, change of pace for him. And lastly, we have Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, the Absolute Edition, Volume 3, uh, concluding his run on this series. I'll be reading this for the first time and doing a review, just like I did with Volumes 1 and 2. I'm having super buyer's remorse for getting rid of Volumes 1 and 2 now because I, I don't want to collect absolutes. I have enough time with space with Omnibus, so I decided to sell them, but dang, now I don't have them for this review or uh, to even have them together, but I am still super excited to read and review this book. Let's look at it together. I don't know if I'm more excited about Berserk or this. This one a little bit more because I haven't read this material yet, just the first two volumes. These are probably up there as my favorite uh, Absolute Editions ever. Like, believe me, I mean, the slipcase, beautiful. And then you have the, the felt interior book, looks amazing. It's got this nice texture to it, the spine, the third volume. It's under DC Black Label now. And then this nice little flower you know, green at the bottom. So let's look into this. Take a look at the artwork, which is always beautiful. And again, just kind of a little bit of regret that I didn't keep volumes one and two. So here we go. So you got a dead man, swamp thing. You have that great DC Vertigo era art, the tone the stories I love how Swamp Thing can go from like an overarching thing to nice one and done I feel like Swamp Thing does that well Moon Knight does that well uh, I, I do think these had recoloring correct I mean that was the case with the first volume if I recall and it does look like it was recolored and my stance has always been like for me this is the first time I've experienced this story in this format so it never bothered me but I could see where you know somebody who grew up with the original comics would would take to that but um i love the first two volumes cannot wait to knock this one out dark side shows up paper quality is amazing uh the binding looks great overall love this so you got some movie stuff i i saw the movies back in the day as a kid but i don't remember any of it 
It always reminded me of uh, Toxic Avenger or Toxic Crusader as well, which is obviously just like a ripoff character, but they had those toys as a kid, man. See, that's how you get the kids, through those toys. Well, that same page, but the original sketch or original uh, art for it. Awesome. All right, guys, and there we have the haul for today. Like I said, super excited to get into that Swamp Thing by Alan Moore and uh, Berserk Volume 10. Let me know what you're picking up, if anything, in this haul. And thanks for watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.